How you doing? This is Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. Welcome to Tool Time Tuesday. Because of the coronavirus and the fact that we've been making face shields to donate to our local nurses, doctors, hospitals, frontline workers, I was going to skip the Tool Time Tuesday thing for a while, but I thought about it. A lot of my friends out there are running lasers like this one to help. Um, cut shields and bands and ear savers for all the nurses and doctors. So I figured I would do this week's Tool Time Tuesday so they can learn from my mistakes. Um, my machine was an economy machine. It was only a few thousand dollars. So then it came with basically a fish tank pump that you put inside a bucket. So it takes the water from the bucket. It runs through the laser tube and cools the laser tube as the laser tube is cutting and then it goes back into the bucket. So it's basically room temperature water cooling the tube because the tube reaches hundreds and hundreds of degrees. So what I didn't realize is that's why the machine's so affordable because it doesn't have the features that these larger name brand machines have. The large machines actually have a built-in reservoir. Some have a water chiller. They have a larger pump, they have a reserve. This has none of that. So what I realized, I actually destroyed one of my tubes this way the tube overheats because the machine has a sensor that lets you know when there's no water flowing, but it doesn't detect the temperature of the water flowing through the tube. So the tube overheated and ended up cracking. That's uh, so I did some research and I realized what had caused it. And that's when I bought my chiller that I'm going to show you in a minute. So what the chiller does is there's a couple of different chillers. There's one that, uh, cause the other problem we had with the fish tank pump setup, even with a cover, a lot of dirt and debris was getting in there and then it would pump it into the tube. So you see stuff floating around in the water of the tube. This is bad. The tube should always be completely clear. Also, the fish tank pump can only develop a certain amount of pressure. This has a serious pump built into it. So it was actually blowing the hoses off the back of the machine because they were only held in with wire ties. So once I upgraded the chiller, I upgraded all the, I took off all the wire ties and did standard traditional metal hose clamps with a screw adjustment. So that took care of that problem. So if you run the machine for a long time, I know um, Adam at Divine Concepts had this issue too. And Charles had a similar issue. So Charles, the one that gave me a lot of the tech support on my machine. So the water inside the, the bucket actually starts to boil. So I know um, Adam is still running the setup that came with the machine. His solution was to put frozen ice packs in the water to bring the temperature way back down. So um, what happens is if you don't pay attention, you don't have a thermostat monitoring the water, the water can actually start to boil. And then the water you're trying to cool the tube with is the same temperature as the tube and cause the tube to crack. I. I spent uh, a little bit of money on mine. I think I spent like seven, 800 bucks on it, but it's got a refrigerator built in. So not only does, so it'll pump cool water through the tube. Once the tube temperature reaches a certain temperature, the refrigerator cools on and then it uses refrigerant to actually cool down and lower the temperature of the water flowing through the tube. So you, it sounds like a refrigerator. You can tell when the cooler kicks on because it's got a pump that's pretty quiet. When the refrigerator kicks on, it, it gets kind of loud. So you can tell when it's really cooling. And um, it only happens if we've been running the tube for more than a half hour, 45 minutes. The It's really doing a really good job because we have this machine running eight to 10 hours a day cutting bands. So we have not had one failure since we upgraded to the cooler. Uh, the tube's been happy, hasn't overheated. So I'm gonna put a link in the description. I actually uh, found it for cheaper than what I paid for it. So I'm gonna show you guys where to get it for the best possible cost. Um, you can't go for better tests than this. This machine was getting used a couple hours a week. Now it's getting used eight hours a day without failure. Hasn't failed in the past week. And the chiller's been going all day too. Um, temperature hasn't gone above 75. So running the machine for eight hours for the temperature not to go above 75 is pretty damn impressive. So, um, it's also something to keep in mind when you guys are buying a laser. Somebody reached out to me this morning, asked me for advice on a laser. So you have to think of the exhaust fan. I would not be able to run this laser without the exhaust fan that I've hooked up. So if you look behind me, that hose goes directly outside. So it pulls the fumes out of the machine and it's a high flow fan, something that you would normally use for um, a table saw and it pumps the air directly outside. And even with the fan running, 
you still can you still have a little bit of an uncomfortable smell if you stand by the machine we have the machine upstairs we work downstairs so um that stuff that you have to think about and factor in when you go to buy the machine you're gonna need uh, if you buy the cheap chinese laser like we bought the fan that comes with it is only set to run on the electrical system that they have in china which is different i don't know why it is that way because the machine itself runs on 60 hertz american electric but the fan they send does not um charles can get his to work i wired mine a couple of different ways couldn't get mine to work i actually ended up burning the fan out that came with the unit so i bought this fan so an additional cost to the unit was fan um i wouldn't even recommend trying to run it with the fish pump that it comes with get yourself a chiller try and factor that in if if it's not in the budget then obviously you have to do what you have to do and run the machine with what it came with but save yourself some time and hassle and get the chiller so factor in the price of the machine the price of the chiller making self a nice stand so everything can go together uh the chiller sitting behind the machine right now i want to make a rack for it so i could sit next to the machine that way i can keep an eye on the temperature while the machine's cutting and the air assist pump uh, the pump that they send is sufficient it works really good but i want to make a solid rubber mount for it because if you sit on top of the machine in the machine or on the floor it makes a ton of noise so this video was to talk about the chiller i'm going to post the link for the chiller um if you guys have any questions feel free to email me text me call me hit me up on messenger i answer over 100 messages a day i don't mind but uh hope this helps Hope you guys are able to pick up some machines and help us in the battle fighting the coronavirus, making some face shields, um, ABS bands, some ear savers. For the, That's another thing that we're making now. So the problem is from wearing the mask all day long, the band sitting on the doctors and nurses ears for 8, 10, 12, 14 hours a day starts to irritate and cut. So we're making the ear savers that actually bring, they hold the band up across the back of your head and off the back of your ears. So it's easy to do that with a laser. Um, if you guys have a laser and need the files, reach out to me. I'll get you connected with the people who can give you the files. And then you can start helping out like we're helping out. That's it. Thank you. See you next week. Okay, this is my water chiller. This right here lets me know how much water is in the chiller. This lets me know the temperature it's currently at. And then I can set the temperature that I want it to chill to. The alarm will go off if there's low water pressure, no water pressure, that the water's not flowing, or if the temperature is higher than what I want it to be, or outside of the safety parameters of the machine. Uh, this is what it looks like in the back. Very simple, one tube in, one tube out. On the output tube, it just had the hoses press fit in. I um, was scared that with the pressure it was gonna blow off, so I actually put hose clamps on all the connections, even internally on the machine and going to the tube because uh, my machine just came with wire ties. It has a port, so you can wire it to the board of your laser. I left the flow sensor installed inside my laser, so it, the laser will actually alarm if the flow isn't detected, so I didn't need to hook that up.